Hello there, my name's Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And in previous videos, you may have seen me playing around with Blockbench, which you can use to make 3D models and paint pixel art textures onto their surface. When you do this, that painted texture gets saved as a PNG image. And it's kind of like this unfolded view of all the faces of those 3D forms. And it occurred to me that there's actually an opportunity here for us to manually edit the PNG texture file and pop in some already finished artwork and have that map onto a 3D surface and kind of create like a bit of a scene from it, like a diorama. So today I wanted to explore that workflow using a couple of screenshots that I've grabbed from Kirby's Dreamland 2 for the Game Boy. And we'll get started with a really simple proof of concept just to even show you what I'm kind of talking about here. So I'm gonna set up a simple model to have that title screenshot appear onto. I'll create a new mesh and I'll select the plane option. Uh, for the size or the diameter as it's called here, this is measured in pixels. So I'll put in 160, since that's the larger dimension of our screenshot, and then click Confirm. So you can see now we've got a 160 by 160 plane, which is basically this flat sheet of paper kind of thing. Uh, I'm gonna rotate this up by 90 degrees because I wanna have the game screen kind of propped up like that. With the object selected, we come over here to the Create Texture button, and this is gonna allow us to paint on the surface of this plane. I'm gonna leave everything just set to the defaults, and after clicking confirm, this is now ready for artwork. Uh, we can't really tell right now because the default uh, appearance here is mostly white, but if I grab the brush tool, you can see that I'm able to draw on this now. And the resolution within that plane is 160 by 160. So what I'll do is click here to save the PNG, and then I can hop over to Photoshop and open that file. So the entire canvas we got here is 256 pixel square, but we can see that the actual area for that map plane itself is that uh, 160 that we measured out for the model. Now I'll pop over to my Kirby title screenshot and select the entire thing and copy it and then paste it into the texture PNG. And when it's lined up in that corner, you can see that there's a little bit of excess at the bottom here. And that's just because the height of the Game Boy resolution is only 144 pixels. So there is a 16 pixel uh, extra like difference there. But that's all right, if we actually just delete that spot or turn off that layer of the file, then this uh, piece won't actually even show up in the final model. Now I'm gonna save this as a new file. Uh, you could overwrite the original, but just as a general practice, I like to have access to previous versions. So I'll save this as a PNG and name it as version two. Back over in Blockbench, we can right click on the texture file name and then select change file from the list. I'll locate version two and we can see that it updates with that title artwork now. Now this in and of itself isn't particularly interesting, uh, but it does kind of show just like the proof of concept for how to work with editing existing artwork into a texture file. So let's try to make it a bit more interesting and dimensional from here. Back in the editor, I'm gonna repeat the same workflow as before by starting with a plane object with a 160 pixel diameter, except this time I'm gonna resize it first to be the exact dimensions of the Game Boy screen. And we can do that easily by changing the selection mode to the edge option, and then clicking on the bottom edge and dragging it up by 16 pixels. So I'm shrinking that height from 160 to 144 while leaving the width unchanged at its original 160. Next, I'll duplicate this shape a couple times and offset these from the original. And that way we've got a total of three planes now kind of spaced out from each other. And these are gonna represent different layers that we can separate the title artwork onto to give it some dimension. After creating the texture, you can see that we've now got three of those layers represented up there. And just so that I know which one is which, I'm gonna use the brush tool to label them as the front, middle, and back layer. Um, I guess numbers would also work here. I've gone for BMF, but you know, whatever you wanna do here. Back in Photoshop, we can paste in the title screenshot again. And this time we get to decide which elements will appear on which layer. So I think for the back layer, I'll just do the plain white with the credit. For the middle, maybe I'll isolate that Kirby sprite and the push start together as one asset. And then that leaves the full title artwork to pop out as the front layer. For each of these, I'm also making sure to delete all the excess white space around and in between the sprite work and the letters. All right, so if we change the file out now, uh, we've got this slightly more dimensional version of the title art. I was thinking looking at this that it probably doesn't need the solid white backdrop if we were to just make the entire background that color. So I've made this new version which does just that uh, and also uses a total of five planes. 
and this actually allowed me to separate out some of the stars and the other shapes there to make it feel a bit more dynamic and filled out. And also obviously just having a bit more fun uh, with a more fitting color palette as well. So that's all well and good to play around with the planes, but now if we actually think about that screenshot from the level itself, uh, it'd be interesting to create some of this terrain as actual 3D boxes that we can map the artwork onto all sides of it. So for this, I started by measuring approximately how large each of the assets should be, and generally tried to round things off to multiples of 8 or 16, just because I know that that's where the tile repeats would fit. I'm going to start by creating a large platform for the bottom. So I'll create a cuboid with a diameter of 160 and a height of 16 pixels. I don't think I want the whole level to recede to a depth of 160, so I'm going to select one of the faces on the sides and contract it by 64 pixels. So this is leaving a platform that's 160 pixels wide, 96 deep, and then 16 tall. And this is actually going to be like a base, and that's going to have the score HUD mapped onto it. From here, I dropped in other cubes for the actual terrain. And again, the sizing here is based on the rounded measurements from the screenshot. Uh, the most important thing was just kind of matching the width and the height that we know from the screenshot. And then for the depth, I just tried to stretch them to a level that I thought looked all right on top of the platform and something that would also fit like a multiple of 16 so that the tile art would fit perfectly. To finish the build, I'm gonna place in some planes just like before. And this is where all the various sprite art can be placed. Uh, you could also go the route of dropping individual smaller planes for each sprite, uh, like a separate one for Kirby, separate one for the enemies and the items and all that kind of stuff. But I did it this way because I thought it'd be easy enough just to change the position like that just by editing the texture file rather than manipulating the model. And I kind of like the simplicity here of just constraining those sort of details to like one of five predetermined layers. Now that we're working with more components compared to the earlier example, uh, it's going to be especially important to label the faces so that we know what everything is supposed to be when it's all flattened out into a texture sheet. Uh, I'm going to do this by color coding each of the shapes. So we can choose this paint bucket tool here and then set the fill mode to element. And this fill mode is going to drop that color into all faces of a singular object with just one click. So I'm going to go through and set each shape to be a different color. And that way it'll be more clear on the texture page where that artwork is supposed to go. Of course, this is actually only half the information that we need because we also want a way to tell uh, what exact face of the object it is. So again, I'm going to go through with the brush and just label each of the faces like front, left, right, etc. And that way we have everything kind of coded in this way. Um, the full thing, you know, maybe looks a bit chaotic, but honestly, this is the best way I could think of. And this worked out well enough for me to just reference where everything was going to end up. So taking a look at that texture file in Photoshop, we can see all the faces of every object from that build kind of just mixed together here. And now it's just a matter of breaking down the screenshot and placing all the pieces into these boxes. I'm going to start by grabbing one of the larger platforms, which was a 64 by 64 along the front and just kind of copying that artwork over into all the green areas. Because that original one has some overlap with another platform, we just need to patch over this area by copying the tile artwork into that spot. And when you're working with the Game Boy stuff, this is really straightforward because the Game Boy tiling always sort of breaks down into an 8x8 grid. So it's just a matter of copying those same repeated patterns to patch it over. I'm curious to see how the sprite planes are going to work out, so I'm also going to grab uh, the Kirby sprite and drag that over into the middle plane and then erase all the excess. And the final one I'm going to try for now are these 16x16 16 16 star boxes, uh, since they can actually just be kind of like a simple copy paste onto every side of it. So let's go over to Blockbench and just make sure we're on the right track with this. All right, so it looks like Kirby came in a little bit low. I think I dragged the sprite by an extra 16 pixels than I needed to. Um, but otherwise, this is looking pretty promising. Uh, I'm going to keep assigning the textures in this same way, uh, since we had a few different patterns for the terrain. And then I got to toss in that HUD graphic as well. And it's just sort of a matter of like bouncing back and forth between the programs to make sure that everything comes in the way that you expect it to. So I'm going to keep building this up and maybe finish by tossing in a few of the enemy sprites as well. They weren't on the original screenshot, but they are part of the level. And yeah, so let's just go ahead and take a look at the final thing. Here we go. All right, one of the last things I did was just bring in some of those little star and circle shapes from the title screen. 
Uh, I was just kind of looking for something that would give a bit more decoration to dress things up and kind of show off the depth of the sprite planes here. Uh, it's kind of neat uh, just all together to kind of see this other dimension from that original image. And this turned out to be just another fun way to use Blockbench as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and close out with some CRT time. So thank you for watching and take care and keep it square.